What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. I hope you guys are all having a great day. Today I have for you guys the story of Stedman Bailey. We're going to take a deep dive into his entire football career from beginning to end. Also look at the tragic story that ended his football career and how it's a miracle that he is still alive today. We're also going to talk about what he's been up to nowadays and yeah, Stedman Bailey is one of my favorite players of all time so I thought I'd start out this new series with him so if you guys enjoy this series and you guys want to see more definitely subscribe drop me a like so i know you guys want to see more and comment down below which player story i should tell next and yeah without further ado let's get right into it stedman bailey was a three-star recruit coming out of high school in the class of 2009 he was five foot 10 inches tall 186 pounds and he was also high school teammates with gino smith he went to miramar high school in Miramar, Florida, he had offers from Power 5 schools such as Wisconsin, Illinois, Iowa, Ole Miss, Rutgers, South Carolina, and Vanderbilt. Ultimately, he only ended up visiting Wisconsin and West Virginia University. He ended up going to West Virginia with his high school teammate, Geno Smith. Starting off his college career, Stedman Bailey made an immediate impact. In 2010, he was a redshirt freshman. He had 24 receptions, 317 yards, and 4 touchdowns. His sophomore year in 2011 was his breakout year, though, as he had 72 receptions for 1,279 yards, which at the time was a West Virginia school record, and 12 touchdowns. That year, he helped the Mountaineers win the Big East Championship, and also win the Orange Bowl against Clemson. His junior season in 2012, he went on to have one of the best seasons a wide receiver has ever had in college football. This was the first year West Virginia was in the Big 12, and he was putting up video game-like numbers. West Virginia started off the season 5-0 and and were ranked 5th in the nation. This had Stedman Bailey alongside teammates Geno Smith and Tavon Austin all in the Heisman race at the midseason point. Unfortunately, they could not keep up those winning waves and they ended up finishing the season 7-6 and with a bowl loss to Syracuse in the Pinstripe Bowl to end the season after that hot 5-0 and start. But still, Stedman Bailey put up insane numbers as he had school records for all three receptions, yards, and touchdowns this season with 114 receptions, 1,622 yards, and 25 touchdowns. He finished his first season as a first-team All-American and now would have his eyes set on the NFL Draft. Stedman Bailey fell to the third round but was drafted 91st overall by the St. Louis Rams in the 2013 NFL Draft, and he was drafted by the same team as his college teammate Tavon Austin. This dominant wide receiver duo was now staying together going into the league. In Stedman Bailey's rookie year in 2013, he played in all 16 games but only had 17 receptions for 226 yards and no touchdowns. In his sophomore season, he was suspended for the first two games of the season for taking PEDs. He did play in the last 14 games though, and he showed that he has extremely hard work ethic as he doubled his numbers from his rookie season as he had 435 yards, 30 receptions, and one receiving touchdown, which is, was his first career receiving touchdown. He also made the most of his opportunities on special teams as he had a punt return touchdown and also forced four fumbles on kickoff returns. In the 2015 season, Stedman Bailey played the first eight games and in those eight games he had 12 receptions for 182 yards and a touchdown. After the eighth game of the season, Stedman Bailey was then suspended again, this time for taking marijuana. While being suspended, Stedman Bailey returned home to spend time with his family in Miami, Florida. He was going out to dinner with his cousin and his cousin's two kids. While all of a sudden, while they were parked in the street getting ready to leave, they were victims of a drive-by attack. Their car was shot at 30 times, but luckily Stedman and his cousin were able to shield the two kids in the back seat. The two kids came out of this tragedy uninjured luckily, but unfortunately Stedman took two shots to the head and his cousin took 11 shots to the body. It was said in an interview by Stedman that he didn't even know that he had been shot until he seen blood dripping down his face. He said that he didn't feel any pain at all in his head. 
Unfortunately, their friend who was inside the house did come out and drive them to the hospital and got them there very quickly. He got to the hospital safely and had surgery the very next morning. After surgery, they told Stedman that he may not even be able to walk or talk ever again, and these injuries could be very, very severe. It was a miracle Stedman and his cousin had survived, and two weeks after surgery, after being told that he may never walk or talk ever again, Stedman Bailey got up and he was walking through the hospital. Stedman Bailey's work ethic really started to show as after he was walking, he was jogging, and five months after, he was back on the football field running routes and lifting weights. He worked his butt off after this tragedy to try to get back into the NFL and keep his dreams alive. He even redid his pro day at WVU after the incident and beat his 40 time from when he did it in the draft combine. Unfortunately, all that work did not pay off as he was in a tremendous shape and ready to get back on the football field. NFL doctors just could not clear him to play because of how severe his head injury was. Although it was a sad way for Stedman Bailey's NFL career to end, Stedman does not look at it that way as he says that it is all in God's plan. He took this out as a positive and he really shares his story and helps a lot of people who are facing adversity. This is why Stedman Bailey is one of my favorite players of all time. He's really inspired me and I look up to him because he has always been so positive with me being a West Virginia fan. He has just always been so positive. Nowadays, Stedman Bailey spends a lot of time with his wife and his son and the rest of his family. He is also still involved with the West Virginia University football team as he helped coach, and he also went back and finished his degree. He also stays involved with the Los Angeles Rams organization in any way he can. He also helps with a lot of organizations that help people find their faith and helps people who are in sports with their mental health. And that is going to do it for this video, guys. Let me know what you guys think about Stedman Bailey's story down below in the comment section below. Also, drop a like and subscribe if you guys want more. I want to make this into a series, so let me know your guys' positive and negative feedback about this video because I want to make them better for you guys. And I also want to make this into a series, so let me know which former college star story you guys want to see next. And yeah, without further ado, it's Boy Danny, and I am out.